too close though. No, that's fine. I'm close is better for me. I felt this felt kind of a So we got to line number 46 Where uh, Imam al Busayri, Last thing that he said that verily The fadl of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Has no bound Such that a person can enumerate this, The greatness of him sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We said that this was because that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi is constantly increasing in rank. Constantly, constantly increasing in rank such that even if someone were to praise him, that he was constantly reaching in rank, that, that, that no one will ever praise him truly, so I said him as he uh, deserves to be praised. And he goes on to say that, that لَوْ نَاسَبَتْ قَدْرُهُ آيَاتُهُ عِذَمًا أَحْرِسْمُهُ حِينَ يُدْعَ دَارِسَ الْرِمَمِي That... Uh, 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 if a miracle could equal his stature and magnitude The mere mention of his name would revive decaying bones So the author here is telling us That the signs in the ayat of the Prophet Muhammad Don't equal his true qadr, his true rank Right? Because he's saying that Would his signs reach his true rank That were his name وسلم, to be mentioned over decaying bones That they would have come to life Right? So, so there's nothing that has been Narrate to us that this happened uh, 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 in, in the Sunnah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam That his name was mentioned over decaying bones that they came of life Right, so he's, he's affirming here that, that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Qadr in his rank Right, is greater even than all of the many signs that he came with And he came with many, many different signs Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Right, and so that, that, that his rank is greater than the signs that he came with And he goes on to say that لم ينتحن بما تعيد عقول به حرص علينا فلم نرتب ولم نهيمي. That concern for our welfare, he did not confuse us with matters we could not fathom, so we neither wondered nor wavered. And this is what we see in a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that uh, that, that أُمِرْنَا يَا مَعْشِرَةِ الْإِنْبِيَاءِ إِنْ نُنْزِلَ النَّاسِ مَنَازِلُهُمْ Right, that that we were ordered, O Ma'shir, in group of of the the group of of Inbiya, to talk to people. According to their, their into to deal with them according to their level, right? Into in, into into speak to them according to their intellectual level, right? And so we take this meaning of this is that if you're speaking to people that can't understand intricacies, right? That you're not supposed to speak to them in in, in ways that they can't understand, right? That if if people are are are, no, are, are uh, you know can can and this is part of this is when we read this and we hear these attributes of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we we should strive in our lives right to implement them. Right, and, and each and every day we're constantly coming into contact with people. Right, that that that, that one of the, the greatest hikmas and da'wah is to realize the person that you're talking to. Right, this is why he was commanded, so I said them, to call to the path of his order with hikmah, right, with wisdom, right, understanding the people that you're talking to. Right, if you're talking to people from a certain background, you have to talk to them in that way. Right, this is why we see that the story of Sayyidina Omar, when he actually came to the door. Uh, of the Prophet, where the Prophet Muhammad was staying, and at this time he had become Muslim, right? But when he answered the door, they said, Who is it? Right? And they said, It was Sayyidina Umar. And Sayyidina Hamza was in the back, he said, Let him in. You know, I'll, I'll ki he didn't think he didn't know he was Muslim yet. He said, Let him in, I'll kill him with his own sword, right? And, but he came in to profess that he was Muslim, and the Prophet Muhammad and is said to have grabbed him firmly, right? And, and gave, you know, grabbed him firmly and, and gave him a firm, uh, uh, and, and grabbed him firmly. And, he, and, they, and they say that this is, the scholars say that this is from the hikmah of da'wah. That Omar was a very rough man. Right? He, he wanted to let him know that, that you don't have to become this weakling once you enter into Islam. Right? That you can, you can still be strong, but direct your strength towards giving victory to the deen. Right? So this, this, this hikmah that we have to have in understanding people uh, of what they, you know, what they can take. Right? And, and the Prophet Muhammad was the most knowledgeable of, 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 of people's needs. 
This is where we see in, 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 in the battle of, of Khandak, which was in a time that was extremely cold. And if it was anyone who's been in Arabia in, in the winter, it's extremely bone-piercing cold. Right, or they, they were they were they were had little food and little clothing when they were going out to fight the Quraysh, and it went on for for an extended period of time. Right, and when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave them permission to go home, that they said that that, 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 that they they went home immediately. Right, but the point is that he had realized Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that human beings have a, a limit. You know, I mean, there's only so far that you can push people. So he didn't right. He didn't try us with things that our intellects were unable to accept. Right, he those people of, of, of those people that were were simple believers. Right, he didn't he didn't force the Bedouin, you know, to learn the extensive details of, of, of the religion, to learn intellectual proofs and stuff. Right, that if, if his if his ability was to learn a certain level, he let him stay at that level. Right, and if someone was more intelligent, and he dealt with each Sahabi according to how he was. Right, that that, that, that those that were that were closer to him, he demanded more of them. So he, he didn't challenge people to do more than they could bear. Hirs and Alina, right? And as of, as of Yani, this, is, this comes from, this word Hirs comes from the ayah, right? Harisun Alikum, Bil Mu'minin Ra'ufun Rahim. That he is Haris Alina, Al Mu'minin. That he, is, he he's, has a strong concern to make sure that, 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 that everything goes right for the believers, right? Falam Narutab wa lam Nahimi, such that we didn't have uh, doubt. Because of the way the Prophet ﷺ interacted with us, walam nahimi, nor were we confused from his uh, uh, prophetic character, right? Aayyal wara fahmu ma'nahu falaysu yara fi al-qurbi wa al-bu'di fihi ghairu munfahimi. That human beings cannot grasp his meaning, right? Even those at his side could not keep up with him, right? And and so that 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 the the word used here is that 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 human beings are unable. To fully understand his meaning, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in the reality of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there's only a, a certain limit that they can reach in, in their knowledge of him, right? Fil qurbi wal bu'di fihi ghairumun fahimi, right? That that whether they were close to him, right, of the closest of the Sahaba, right, or whether they were from the people that were farther from him, right, that none of them, all of them, were unable to know him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, he says in Nixon's the next line that Kashimsi Tathar Lil Ainini Min Buradin. Like the sun, right, that appears to the eyes from afar. Sagiratin, it appears to be small. Right? That you're unable to right, you're in a, when you look at it, you're unable to, to, to see it properly, because it's the sun. Right? So that if you're even if you're if you were obviously real close to the sun, you'd melt. Right? Even if you whether you're close or far away from the sun, you just can't you can't even look at it. Right, and likewise, with, with this is the analogy that he's made for the people that were either close or far from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that they, were, they would never uh, were able to, to realize his reality, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he, the, the way Shaykh Hamza translates this, that he is like the sun, small to the eye when seen from afar, but when glints close up, it dazzles and overwhelms. So he goes on to say, وَكَيْفَ يُدْرِكُ الدُّنْيَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَكِيكَتُهُ that how can slumberous souls in this world grasp his reality, distracted as they are by the strength of their dreams, right? And this is this is this is you know that he's saying here that how could people attain his reality, right? That that people that that are that are that are walking through the life sleeping, right? And, and in a tradition that that an nasu niyamun ida ida matu intebahu that people are sleeping. Right? And when they die, they, they, they will wake up. Right? And so that how could people realize the greatness of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when people are going through life you know, like, like zombies, right? not, not taking care to learn his sunnah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and taking care to, to learn about him. Right? فَمَبْلُغَ الْعِلْمِ فِيهِ أَنَّهُ بَشَرٌ وَأَنَّهُ خَيْرُ خَلْكِ اللَّهِ كُلِّهِمِ Right? So he says that, that, that uh, the extent of what we know of him is this. He is a man. And yet, without exception, he is the best of God's creation. Now, this is the line that we previously mentioned, where the Prophet, where Sayyidina, uh, where Imam Al Busayri had reached this point of the poem, and then he, he, he didn't, he couldn't, he wasn't able to say any more poetry. And then he saw the, he saw the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi in his dreams, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi completed the line. وَأَنَّهُ خَيْرُ خَلْكِ اللَّهِ كُلِّهِمِ Right, that, 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 that the limit of our knowledge, the مَبْلَغَ الْعِلْمِ Right, that, 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 اللَّهُمَّ لَا تَجَدَ الدُّنْيَا مَبْلَغَ عِلْمِنَا Right, oh Allah, don't make the dunya the extent of our knowledge. Right, this is a dua, that, a good dua that we can make.
there's a difference of opinion of the, of, of the scholars of aqidah of darkness, right? Of, of what is the technical definition of darkness. We're not going to get into that. But the point is, is that if, if they say that in an extreme darkness, right, that a, a small candle will bring a lot of light, right? And so the thing, these societies that we live in are extremely dark, right? And the thing is, is that, is that we have to bring to him them the light of this message, right? This, this, our, our tradition is a tradition of light, right? That if anyone who studies the sciences of Sharia will feel his heart become enlightened, right? And that's every time we do a type of ibadah, it's increasing our nur, it's increasing the, the inward aspects of, of, of our iman. Right and and uh, although there's a difference of opinion, some of them say that that uh, you know that actions aren't increased by one's iman, but the others say that that each and every time we do the more works we do, the more iman our our iman can increase. Right, and so the point is is that that we be people who spread this light, right, and this is why we see them saying that 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 that, that when they came into the majlis of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that. From because all of this, they, they, they had the, the description was that when they came into the majlis of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that it was hard for them to find out who he was, like which one was actually the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. First and foremost, from his humility, he didn't sit up on a, a podium and have people sit at his feet, or he was he was down with them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on the floor, right? That he, that he never ate on a table, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, never ate from a table. Right? He used to sit on the ground, he used to sleep on the ground, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? It's all signs of his, of his humility. Right, and there's a story we see with Sayyidina Omar when he came in one day and he found the Prophet Muhammad saw him sleeping on a mat that had put uh, put marks on his side. Right, that that, that he said that O Rasulullah, that then he mentioned about what the kings of the other places live, the palaces that they live in, and so forth. And, and the Prophet Muhammad uh, responded to him by saying, "Is it enough for you, Ya Omar, that Allah has given us this is for them in the dunya, and Allah has given us the akhirah?" Right, and so that, that when they came into his majlis, he was humble down there with them. Right, and also that he said that, that, that because they were with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, another reason they didn't know him is because the other Sahaba's faces were all filled with light. Right, that this light of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had emanated fr uh, from him to them. Right, so that wherever they went, that this is why the Islam spread so fast. Right, these people were enlightened people. Right, that, right. That these people, the Arabs, were not people. That, you know, they didn't. People, you know, just uh, they, they didn't like. They didn't have any respect for Arabs before, right? But after the after after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, changed these people from savages into enlightened people of the highest degree, right? That, that this is why that their message spread so fast, right? Many times without saying anything, just by seeing them. Right? And so the, the point is that they, they, they carried this light and, 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 and they brought this light to people that were in darkness. Right? So he goes on to say that أَكْرَمْ بِخَلْقِ نَبِيًّ زَانَهُ خُلُقُونَ بِالْحُسْنِ مُشْتَمِلًا بِالْبِشْرِ مُتَّسِمِ That uh, what excellence lies in the birth mm. Okay Okay that what excellence lies in the birth of a prophet adorned with such character, beauty itself shines forth from his smiling face. Right. So ekram is a way by which of is sifa to ta'ajjub by saying what a, what a great you know uh, uh, prophet this is. His even his outward form zanhu khulukun. So not only did he have a beautiful outward form, that he was a, this beautiful outward form was adorned with character. Right. There's many people who are very beautiful outward, right, but they just have awful character. And if you spend a short time with them, they're no longer beautiful to you. Right? And there's many other people that, that, that might not be beautifully outward, but, but you come to love them from their inward character. Right? So, كَالزَّهْرِ فِي تَرَفٍ وَالْبَدْرِ فِي شَرَفٍ وَالْبَحْرِ فِي كَرَمٍ وَالْدَهْرِ فِي هِمَمِ Exquisite as a lily. Right? So, that كَالزَّهْرِ فِي تَرَفٍ Taraf is like the, is, is the softness of something. Right? So, he was a soft as a, as a flower. Right? وَالْبَدْرِ فِي شَرَفٍ And as honorable as the as the full moon, yeah, I mean, the full moon has honor over all the other types of moons, right? That when you see when there's when the, you see the little crescent moon, right? It's not as seen the big full moon, right? And, and what you feel by it, so it, the, the, just as that just as the full moon has a lot is more honorable than all the other types of moon, the half moon and the in the crescent moon. That likewise he is 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 is, is more honorable over all others. Well, bahri fi karamin, and he is like a bahar. In karam, in generosity, and the Arabs would 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 continuous in in Arab poetry, they would describe someone as generous, 
right, as 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 as, as, as being a bahar. Right, and the idea is is that if someone's in need of water and they take water from an ocean, they'll continually have water, continue time and time and time again. Right, as if and that likewise a, a generous person, right, that he'll continue and give, give and give and give and give and give and give over and over and over again. And it's almost as if it will never uh, his, his 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 what he has will never uh, 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 will never uh, uh, he'll always have more and more to give. Right, what dehri fi himami. Right, he's like his his himma is like time, right? And so this is this is basically showing that like that they use they, they, why do they, they why do they explain himma as time, right? That normally sometimes the Arabs when they want to describe something they 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 describe something by what is done in it, right? So that so that normally things are done within time, right? So if someone has himma like time, it means they're never getting tired, right? They're always doing they're always has this himma that's constant. Right of doing something over and over again. كَأَنْهُ وَهُوَ فَرْدَ مِنْ جَلَالَتِهِ فِي أَسْكَرَ الْحِينَ تَلْقَاهُ وَفِي حَشَمِ That due to his majesty, even when alone, he seems surrounded by military might and cohorts of courtiers. Right, so that 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 even when he's walking with his army, right, that he has such a majestic presence on the Lord of Islam. It's as if you don't notice anyone else except him. Right, as if he's the only one coming in the army. Right from his majestic presence, and this is how he was described. So I said him, "Manorahu badihatin habahu." That whoever saw the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, suddenly had a hay before him and, and looked at him with with uh, with reverential awe. Woman jalasahu ahabahu, and whoever sat with him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to love him from his from his akhlaq that spread. Right, so he is if he is all by himself. Right, when when he is when he is when he is coming. Uh, 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 with this, uh, with this group of uh, uh, soldiers, right? كأنما لؤلؤ المكنون في صدف من معدن منطق منه ومبتسمي. That it is as if precious pearls locked in their shells poured from the treasure of his sweet mouth and, st- and smile, right? So they saying that they, when he spoke, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? And, 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 and people saw his beautiful teeth that were described as being very white. They said it was as if a pearl. Right, as if when he smiled, that it was like a pearl. When it, when it's, when the shell is open, and you see the shining of it inside the, the, the shell. Okay. لا طيبة يعلد ترب ضم أعظمه طوبة لمنتشق منه وملتثمي. That no طيب, no type of perfume, uh, uh, is as sweet as the ground that holds his bones. What paradise awaits the one who breathes its scent or brushes lips against its soil? Right. This is what he says here. Is that that. In, as we previously mentioned, that the place that, that, that is, is, is actually around the, the body of the Prophet Muhammad is, 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 is the most is the purest place on earth, right? And he's saying that no tib is, is going to equal no type of perfume is going to equal the scent that comes from that dirt that is around his noble body, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He's saying tuba li muntashiqan minhu that tuba is, is, is could either be translated as good tidings or it is a specific tree in Jannah. That, that the believers that 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 that, that, that will be for the believers, right? So we say in tuba, right? Glad tidings to the one who smells the scent, right? Wamultathimi or or kisses it, right? Or kisses this 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 noble dirt uh, that is beneath his uh, feet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right? Even though some of the scholars say that it's actually uh, makru to to there's difference of opinion of touching the muajah sharifa or his grave, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But uh, uh, the Sayyidina Bilal. Right, they, they say that if if uh, the karah is lifted, even of those who say that, if it is by ghalabat shok, that one does it by not being able to overcome himself, and this is why we see that that in the story of Sayyidina Bilal radiAllahu anhu, that when he had gone to Syria because he couldn't handle living in Medina, you know, after the Prophet Muhammad had 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 passed away, that he had to leave Medina, right, and then he saw the Prophet Muhammad in his dream, and and the, and the Prophet said to him. That he said, "Ma had al jafa, ma had al ya Bilal." Like, what is this jafa? Like, what is this? Why have you not, you know, why have you not come to visit me? You know, why is, why are you, why are you, you know, doing this? All right. So he set out immediately to go visit him. So I said them, and they said that when he arrived to Medina, that the first thing he did was he threw himself upon the grave of the Prophet Muhammad. So I said him, and 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 put his face uh, down near his grave. So I said them, right. And so that that also we see that in his story.
مولاي صلي وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق حمي يا رب صل على محمد وعلى سادتنا صحبه الكرم فإن من جودك الدنيا ودارتها ومن علومك علم الأوح والقلم يا نفس لا تقنطي من ذلة عدمات إن الكبائر في الغفران كلم من مولاي صلي وسلم دائما بدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم يا رب صلي على محمد وعلى ساداتنا أهله وصحبه الكرم لعل رحمة ربي حين يقسمها تأتي على حسب العصيان في القسم يا رب واجعل رجائي غير منعكس لديك واجعل حسابي غير منخارم مولاي صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم يا رب صل على محمد وعلى ساداتنا اهله وصحبه الكرم والطف بعبدك في الدارين ان له صبرا متى تدعه الاهوال ينهزم وذل لصحب صلاة منك دائمة على النبي بمنحل ومنسجم مولا يصلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم يا رب صلي على محمد وعلى ساداتنا أهله وصحبه الكرم ما رنحت عذبات البان ريح سبا وأطرب العيس حاد العيس بالنغم ثم الرضا عن أبي بكر وعن عمر وعن علي وعن عثمان ذي الكرم مولا يصلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم يا رب صلي على محمد وعلى ساداتنا أهله وصحبه الكرم ما رنحت عذبات البان ريح صبا وأطرب العيس حاد العيس بالنغم ثم الرضا عن أبي بقر وعن عمر وعن علي 
من عثمان ذي الكرم مولاي صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم يا رب صل على محمد وعلى سادتنا عليه وصحبه الكرام والآل والصحب ثم التابعين فهم أهل التقى والنقى والحلم والكرام يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مدى يا واسع الكرام مولاي صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم يا رب صل على محمد وعلى سادتنا اهله وصحبه الكرام واغفر اليه لكل المسلمين بما يطلوه في المسجد الاقصى وفي الحرام بجاه من بيته في طيبة الحرم واسمه قاسم من اعزام القاسم وهذه بردة المختار قد ختمت والحمد لله في بدء وفي خاطم مولاي صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم يا رب صل على محمد وعلى سادتنا اهله وصحبه الكرام اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الذي امرأت قلبهم جلالك وعينهم من جمالك فأصبح فرحا مؤيدا منصورا وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما والحمد لله على ذلك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب جزاك الله
مكاهنهم بأن دينهم المعوج لم يقومي that uh, and after all this and after and all this after their own even their own diviners declared their creed could no longer stand up to its own right even the diviners the ka the kahana right of the time even stated that the, 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 the diviner is someone who has a connection with a jinn who who hears things from the from the heavens right and they say that that, that, that in the previous generations that the jinn were able to right they're able to steal things from the heavens right this is why that the, in, in in common Arab belief that they believed Right, they used to believe that that, that that the poets were actually inspired by jinn. Right, they believed that the jinn actually fed them these lines of poetry. Right, so the jinn in the, in the realm of the jinn were stealing things from the from the akhbar of the heavens. Right, and and, and they say when Sayyidina Isa was born alayhi salam that they were prevented from from three different uh, from three heavens and then completed and then, and then completely prevented from the heavens when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi was born, except that they were allowed to be close enough. So that they could hear the writing of the pins of the angels. So they were trying to steal akhbar, and that's why that they say the shuhab, right? The 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 the, uh, the comets in the what are they called? The uh, uh, huh? Shooting stars are actually that that, that we believe that 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 it, that it, it is uh, something is happening outwardly, but also spiritually, right? Of of, of this repelling of of the of the shayatin of the jinn that are trying to steal the akhbar from the sama, right? And this is why they also. That, that some of them, right, that there, there's, a, there's a spiritual reality to things, right, and this is why some of them, right, they, 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 when they describe that, that what, is the, what is lightning according to the scholars, right, and, and some of them describe it as the laugh of an angel, right, of a shooting out of, of right, and these are type of things that, that we might not necessarily see in terms of, uh, of, of uh, from our limited ability, but these are, are realities, right, that there's each and every person has two angels with him at every time. Right, we don't see them, right? But it, but it's real. The unseen is, is something real that it, that it, that is that, that is real, right? And so that 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 these people, this this these kahana who had this connection with the, she, the, with the with the jinn, even they were told about the coming of the slaf prophet, right? So that and they told them that their deen and mu'wedge, right? Their corrupted religion would not last, right? Well, بَعْدَ مَا عَيَنُ فِي مِنْ شُهُبٍ, right? Uh, 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 من من that and even after they witness comets crashing on the skyline or shooting stars falling to earth as their idols, idols fell on their faces right until demons diverted from religion's path follow the footsteps of other devils who fled in defeat right Right, so that 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 these that they that they fleeing like the wretched combatants of Abraham, right? So that he's talking about the fleeing of these demons, like like the, like the wretched right combatants of Abraham. And right? in the famous story when 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 Abraham who who was who was uh, who was uh, who, who who was living in the Sana'a region of Yemen, that when uh, 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 the the Najashi, the king of 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 of, of, of Ethiopia at the time. Had 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 owned part of Yemen, and he was the one that had opened this big church in this part of, of Yemen, so that in order to draw some of the the, the, the people from the Kaaba to here, and this is when one of the Arabs heard about this that he went and did something that we shouldn't do as Muslims, but he defecated on this person's church. All right, and this is when he then he said after this that he had sworn by Allah, by God, that he would go and 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 and, and, and knock down the Kaaba rock by rock. So he sat on the path and he was unable to. Right? And in the famous stories, everyone knows when the, the birds came with three pebbles, one in the mouth, two in the hands, and shot them at these people, and they, and they started running. Right? So he said the fleeing of the de de devils right, was like the fleeing of these soldiers of Eberha when they were fleeing from these, these pebbles being thrown at them from the, from the, angel, or from the uh, birds. O Asgar and Bil Hasa, min rahatehi rumi. Right? Or like the army routed by pebbles hurled from his hand. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? And in, in, in this is his opinion, whether it's in Badr or Hunayn, that when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had thrown dirt, right? And, 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 and it had gotten in the eyes of all of the, uh, of, of the, of, of the, of, of the uh, people that were fighting against the army of the Muslims. And they were obviously in a state of confusion after that. So it's like the fleeing of the soldiers of Abraha, or like those people that after they had had this dirt in their, in their, in their, in their face, and they were spread and they were confused, Right? Nebdan bihi ba'da tasbihin bi Right? 
that cast from his palms after they finished praising God. So what Imam Abu Sayyid here is, and, he, and, and it's mentioned in the Shara here, is that he's saying that, that, that these were the same stones that had, uh, had made tasbih in the hand of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right, that he then threw. Right? But, uh, but, but, but then Imam Bajuri said that there's nothing that, that, that ascertains and makes, you know, that, that, that these were actually the same pebbles that he threw. Right, that, right. That there's, but this is what the, the author means here. So the point is, is that nabdad musabbihi min ahshai multaqimi. Right, the way prayerful Jonah was cast from the belly of the whale. Right, and so the thing is, is that that, that there were these rocks that 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 uh, 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 did, uh, as Sayyidina Anas mentions, that the Prophet Muhammad at one time had a handful of rocks in his hand, and they made tasbih. Right, and the Sahaba heard this. And then he put him in the hands of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq and they also made tasbih and the Sahaba heard this. And he put him in the hands of Sayyidina Omar and did the same thing. Where the Sahaba uh, heard this. وَإِنْ مِنْ شَيْنْ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ right? There's nothing except that it, it, it praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمْوَاتِ وَالْعَرْضِ That everything in the heavens and earth is, is, is praising Him uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And, and were the veil to be removed that people would see and understand this, this tasbih. But it's 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 a, everything is making tasbih, right? That everything is in submission, right? Except one creature, with only one creature that some of them refuse to to submit and, and believe in the Creator, and that's uh, the the Bani Adam, right? Some of them. So we'll go ahead and stop there and prepare for Maghrib. Okay. meters two arm length so it was about 50 meters high right and they used to say about it that nothing would knock this thing knock this uh, huge throne down except lightning right and they said that 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 when the problem almost like said it was born it cracked right it, it, it just there's a crack in it right and, and then later on in Harun al-Rashid one of the Muslim leaders had heard that there was a treasure underneath this throne and it was such a massive structure that he was unable to even uh, get rid of it, right? But when the Prophet Muhammad was born, that it cracked, right? And likewise, in the next uh, line, when naru khamiratul anfasi min asafin alayhi wa nahru sahil aini min sadami, that the Magian's fire expired out of sorrow. The Euphrates River forgot its course out of grief. Another one thing that happened were the Magians, right, who who worship fire, right? That they said that their fire had not uh, extinguished this fire that they used to worship and constantly keep lit for over a thousand years. Some even say two thousand years, right? But they say when the Prophet Muhammad was born, this fire that they used to worship extinguished from his birth. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So this is what Imam Busayr is mentioning here. And also, right, and water took on fires. Uh, anyone searching uh, the Euphrates River forgot its course out of grief. And they say the Euphrates River, which was in uh, Iraq, which is in Iraq. Which is which was the, which is a, a, was a very important river for the people living nearby, right? Where they had their livelihood and, 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 and they had depended on this river. That they said it was one of the miracles was that it, it went off course, right? And, and, and the, the river was the normal course they had taken. It went off course, right? And these are all mu'jizat of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? And there's a difference between a mu'jiza and mu'jizat and irhasat, right? A mu'jiza is a miracle. Right, that the Prophet Sallallahu was given after his Nubuwa, right after he completed his, his 40th year. Right, whereas an Irhas is something, is, is a breaking of the norm that happens before he becomes a Prophet. Right, so he had many Irhasat. Right, the Shaka Sadr when he was young was, in, was from his Irhasat. Right, and, and, and many of the other things that happened to him. Right, his, his, his when he was actually born, right, the first thing him doing going into sujood. Right, and, 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 and holding his hand like this. Right, these are from the, the irhasat of, of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Many, 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 many different irhasat. Right, and so that uh, this this river uh, went to um, uh, went out of its normal course, and then he goes on to say that wasa'a sawata an ghadat wuhayratuha warudda wariduha bil ghaydi hina zami. That the shocked village of Sawa watched its lake dry up. Anyone searching for water came back. Mad with thirst, and likewise, this this river, this lake that everyone had been drinking from, also uh, the water washed up or dried up. 
كأن بالنار ما بالماء من بلل حزن وبالماء ما بالنار من ضرم as if fire were as wet as water from sorrow and water took on fire's inflammable nature so he's driving home the point here that 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 things that had been previously going on for a long time that when he had had had, had come sallallahu alaihi wasallam it made things in in yani in qalab and the things it, you know they 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 switched around right from from the way that they were normally going right That uh, That jinn cried out from afar, and the flare of his birth lit up the darkened land. The truth became plain as day in word and meaning. And this is another thing that they say that that that, that people had heard uh, the the voices of the calling of jinn. Also, these are all signs that he's specifically related to his birth. And it, and it was said that that that, that this it was it, it was in his, when he had one of the other signs is that when he was born, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that light had emanated out of Amina, such that she could see the palaces in the Byzantine Empire, right? That this emanated this when he was born, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that this light came out, that that such that and these are these type of things are not you know uh, we believe in miracles, you know what I mean? And the thing is, just because you know they're not, these are not like. These are not like uh, fables. They're not. Um, they're not. They're not just like uh, 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 legends, right? These are things that really happened, right? The miracles of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The next chapter is all about his miracles. These are these are miracles of, of things that have happened, right? And, and and likewise is that many people throughout the the Ummah have witnessed breaking of the norms on the hands of the Salihin, right? And and just because we don't see them in this day doesn't mean that they don't exist. Right, that the, the, the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is, is, is protected and they still exist and they still happen. Right? And they say that the, 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 the reason that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has hidden a lot of these miracles from people in this time is because of their own state. Right? That Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has ghayra, right? Allah has this positive and protective jealousy for His people. Right? So He has hidden them in a time that people don't believe in them. Because one of the conditions for, belief, for benefiting with something is believing in them. Right, that, 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 that Allah has hidden it from people that because that because of their shortcomings, right? And, and, and but at the end of time is that 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 that, 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 that many of these 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 miracles that had happened previously are are said to have are, are going to happen uh, again, right? So he goes on to say that that amu wa sammu fi'lanu bishaari lam yusma wa barikatu indari lam tu shami. That yet they were blinded and defined and defi- deafened by denial. So the good news were unheard, went unheard, and the warning flashes unseen. Right. So that that even though that that all of these 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 signs had started to happen, right. But they but they they didn't see them, nor did they listen. Right. The signs that could be witnessed, right. They just they didn't witness them. The signs that were supposed to be heard, that they they just overlooked them. Right, and so the fi'lan al bashair al lam yusma. So this is this is these are these bashair of this coming of the Prophet of the end of time. Right, and and, the, and it is written in the it's 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 in their books. Right, that, that this is why that they were they were people were expecting this Prophet to come at the end of time. Right, that's the whole reason that Salman al Farisi had eventually found uh, Medina. Right, because that was he was he was he had heard about this prophet that was supposed to come at the end of time, and he found Medina because he knew the description of the place where he was going to come. So I said, them. Right? and once he saw this description match, he stayed there, right? and through his sincerity, he eventually found him, found the Prophet Muhammad. So I said, them. right, and when when he when he when he first time that he met the Prophet Muhammad, so I said, them, he had a description of three things that he that he wanted to see about the Prophet Muhammad. So I said, them. one was that he never that he wouldn't accept sadaqah, right, but he would accept a gift. Right, and that he had on his back a khatam and nabuwa. So when saying that some man Farsi had heard about this last prophet that had come, he went to them, right, and he bought him some dates from the, where he used to work with the with the Yahudi, and he said that he gave to the Prophet Muhammad he said this is sadaqa, right, and the Prophet Muhammad said him passed it on to get let someone else eat it. The very next day he came to him and he said that this is a hadiyah, this is a gift, right. The Prophet Muhammad can accept a gift, he can't accept charity. Right, and so that he then took and he took a bite from it and passed it on to the others. So he said, so man was like, that's two. Right, and then as the Salman is walking away, the Prophet Muhammad so sent him himself went like this and said and showed him. Right, and he saw the khatam of, of, of the Prophet Muhammad. He saw the khatam and nubuwa. Right, that they say is like a like a 
They say it's like a, an egg, a pigeon's egg, right? And some of them even describe about how it looked with hairs on it and the like, right? But but the point is is that that, that they witnessed these things firsthand, right? They knew that there was this prophet going to come, right? When when the prophet Muhammad like was a young boy, right? That 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 uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Buhaira, what's his name? The monk? Huh? Yeah. Huh? What's his name? Buhaira? Uh, uh, okay, the, this, one of the one of the monks that was in that was in the the, the, the direction of Sham, right? Where the, when the Prophet Muhammad was traveling with his uncle, right? That this monk had never gone out to speak to the Arabs before, right? But they were all expecting the Prophet at the end of time, and all of a sudden he looks and he sees this cloud, right? That wherever the Prophet Muhammad used to walk, that this cloud was over him, right? And then when when they finally uh, settled not too far from him, he went to them. Right, invited them all over for dinner, right? And and and, and uh, when they all went in to, to uh, have dinner with him, that he said that no, there's one more person, right? He said that where's the where's there's one more person, right? And he said that that that, that, that they told him said oh that that's just one person he's he's just a young one from he's taking care of the camels, right? And then he said no no he said bring him, right? And then he asked him he said who's his father, right? And he said I'm his father, right? It was Abu Talib, right? he said I'm his father, and then the monk said no no no. This man doesn't have a father, right? And he went on to say, then Abu Talib said, you're right, right? I'm actually his uncle and I've come to take care of him and this type of thing, right? So they knew, right? That they knew for, of the coming of this last prophet, right? And so that, 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 that there's not just one sign. There's many, many, many different signs. It's impossible that all of them are not true. It's impossible. These things are true. These things happen. There's too, many, there's too much evidence that proves, you know, that, that proves all these things, right? So that... Uh, they didn't listen to these basha, these, these these glad tidings of the coming of the last prophet, right? Min ba'di ma akbar al aqwa. That shows of how respect for the family of the Prophet is extremely important. Right? And one of the examples is Sayyidina Bilal that when uh, he came back to Medina, that that uh, the Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq had asked him to call the adhan, right? And he and he refused. Right, he didn't want to do it. Sayyidina Omar asked him, he refused. And finally, Sayyidina Hassan bin Ali, who was from Ahl Kisat King, to asked him to call the Adhan, and he said that I, he couldn't refuse someone from the family of the Prophet Muhammad. Right, and so that they said that he then went to call the Adhan, and he said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And he said, when they said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, people started to walk out of their house right, in Medina. Right, because they, 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 they thought that they, this re, had reminded them of the time that the Prophet Muhammad was there. And they came out from their houses in order to, to see what was going on. Right? And he said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And by the time he reached the Shahada, they said that Dajjal Medina bil Buka, that all of Medina, where you could just hear people weeping. Right? Because this reminded them of the time that, that the Prophet Muhammad uh, uh, was there. Uh, so that, that in, in another example we see is that uh, uh, Sayyidina uh, Zayd ibn Thabit was one of the teachers of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas. Right? Abdullah ibn Abbas is, is the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? That he's one of the greatest of, of, of the Habr al-Ummah. Right? He's, he's, the, he's the greatest scholar. He's a scholar, of the scholar of the Ummah. Right? And, and um, wa, wa tarjuman al-Qur'an. Right? The, the tarjuman, the, the greatest mufassar of the Qur'an. And we see him that when he was, he was younger than Sayyidina Zayd ibn Thabit. Right? When he was coming in on his riding beast one day, that he went to help him down uh, while he was coming down from his riding beast. Right? And, and, he, and, he, and Sayyidina Zayd looked at, him, looked at him and he said, that is, 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 is you know, it wasn't, you shouldn't, you know, he was basically saying, oh, he, he, Sayyidina ibn Abbas, went to, he, Sayyidina Zayd didn't want him to do something. Do that because he realized that he was from the family of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So he said that he, he told him he shouldn't be doing this, and he said that this is how what we were ordered to do with our scholars, right? To, to to be courteous to them and help them. And then he went after that and he kissed the hand of Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas, right? And he was a student and younger than him, and kissed his hand and said, and this is what we were ordered to do to to the family of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So 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 taqbil al yad is is it's 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 recommended in Sharia. Right, that anyone who is from the family of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or a scholar, or 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 or, uh, uh, or someone elderly in age, it, it is a very it's a good custom, you know. That it's, it's a good thing to do the, of of taqbil al yad for those who who deserve it. People, if they're able to, they should, you know, that uh, uh, kissing their, their parents' hands and the like is, is something that is positive in Sharia, right? So 
this is the end of the third chapter, and then he goes on in the next chapter to talk about the birth of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Right, so he started with a chapter about the love of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he went to the chapter about the, you know, that the, talked about the nafs. Then he talked about the third chapter, which is in praise of him, so I said them. And then he's going on to talk about now the fourth is about the mawlid and the birth of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he goes on to say, Abana mawliduhu antibi unsurihi, yatiba mubtada'in minhu wa muqtatami. Right? His birth revealed the purity of his elemental nature. Oh, pure from first to last. Yani meaning pure from his, from his father, to Sayyidina, to Abdullah, Sayyidina Abdullah, back to uh, Sayyidina Adam, alayhi salam. Right? And so that every single one of the, the, the ancestors of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a muwahid, of someone who believed in, 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 uh, in, in one God. Right? And, and, there's, and there's some of the, the more extensive books of Sirah, Right, in the books of Sirah, that they, the books of Sirah, that they start, right, many of them before the birth of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but also they start at the, you know, that they, that they mention the ancestors of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right, and, and there's many signs, right, that, 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 that of, of, of looking into each ancestor, they mention certain things about them, right, that some of them could, could that they say that the nur of him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was seen in the faces of his, of his ancestors. Right? And, 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 and this was something that the scholars had, had concerned themselves with. Right? And, 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 and nowadays you have people criticizing these type of things, but this is something that the scholars have been doing for centuries. And it's only in this time that people have, have criticized these type of things. But there's, they mention the stories of, 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 uh, of Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib. Right? And what, of a, what a great man he was. Right? And they mention the stories of Sayyidina Abdullah and the things that he used to do. Right? And they mention you know, some of the things that happened to the previous you know, Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib's father Hashem, right? So to be, so the even there's what is very clear from the very beginning of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life to the very end are continuous signs, even before he was born, right? Even even in his ancestors, right? There's just sign after sign after sign. It's all leading up to the, the to the eventual birth of this 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 final prophet that was come to mankind. Now, incidentally, when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born. That even Abu Lahab, that, that, that when he was given this news, it actually set his, his, his slave woman free. One of the slaves that he had, he set her free. Right? And, and there's a hadith that says that, 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 that the punishment in the grave is lifted for Abu Lahab once a week because of this happiness that he had for the birth of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? So this is one of the proofs that the scholars use for the molded, right? That, that, that if this was the happiness of someone like Abu Lahab, Right? He said, what should it be for a believer then? Right? That, that we should celebrate, you know, that, 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 you know that, that celebrating the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Celebrating his, his, his seerah. Even though the people didn't do it in the time of the Sahaba, right? That, that everything in the Mawlid has an asal in Sharia. Right? Ta'zeem of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Mentioning his seerah. Right? What is a Mawlid related to? Praying upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Ya ayuhal lina amna sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Right, everything that, that is in the mode has an asl in Sharia, even though that, 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 that it wasn't actually done right, in, 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 in the, uh, the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's very well known that there's different types of bid'ah. Right? There, there's, there's, there's types of bid'ah that, that is wajib, there's types of bid'ah that is recommended, there's types of bid'ah that is makul, there's types of bid'ah that is haram. Right? And so the thing is, is that not every bid'ah is negative. Right, that only bid'ah that 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 that, that uh, 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 are certain types of bid'ah that contravene something in Sharia is what is negative, right? And this is why the, the, the simple proof for this is that if every bid'ah was a dalala, right? Then why did Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq uh, gather the Quran, right? Why did he gather all the writings of the Quran? Why was it put in them all together in a mushaf in the time of Sayyidina Uthman, right? So the point here is is that certain bid'ahs are 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 uh, are are uh, are are wajib, are incumbent, and others are recommended, right? That when Sayyidina Omar gathered people together and prayed twenty rakahs of of uh, of uh, uh, of tarawih, right? And then when he what is related, that he said he said ni'mat bid ni'mat al bid'ah hadhi, right? He said this is a great bid'ah, right? But he meant that it it, it was it, it wasn't an innovation, but not a negative innovation of what he did. Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al khulafa al rashidin al mahdiyin. Meaning, ba'di. It's upon you to follow my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided caliphs after me. Right? And so the point here is, is that 
this is a side note, but this is something we constantly find ourselves into, right? That, that find ourselves people criticizing these type of practices that people do of of uh, of, of, of of something that is purely uh, legislated and recommended in Sharia. And on top of that, that one even of the later scholars says he says that he goes to the point not only is it permissible and recommended to do the molid, but he said it could even it, 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 that it's it, it's extremely important that we we do these things because nowadays that you have people doing all kinds of other things, right? You have people that grew up in a society where they used to go to concerts. You have people that, 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 that grew up in a society where they're listening to music constantly, right? And so then you have people, there's all other types of gatherings that are calling people to evil, right? So to combat that evil, we have to have religious gatherings, right? That, 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 right? that, 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 that draws people to, 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 to uh, vent that what they have in their hearts, right, to, to, to do something in, in, a, in a good way. Right, so it's very important to, to, that, we, that we encourage the, the youth to attend these gatherings. If there's a molded within town or in another part that, that we go and, and celebrate uh, the life of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So he goes on to say, يَوْمٌ تَفَرَّدُ سَفِيرُ الْفُرْسُ أَنَّهُمُ قَدْ أُنْذِرُوا بِحُلُولُ الْبُؤْسِ وَالنِّقَمِ That day the Persians perceived, um, perceived, in truth, that they had been forewarned of impending difficulties and disasters. Now he's going to mention some of the signs of this prophethood of the, that the of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even at birth, right? Even his birth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there was many different signs. And of them is is he's going to say that that wabata iwan al kisra wahwa munsadiyun kashamni ashabi kisra ghayr multaimi. There's a difference of opinion of the of, of the scholars. Of aqidah of darkness, right? Of, of what is the technical definition of darkness? We're not going to get into that. But the point is, is that if they say that in an extreme darkness, right, that a, a small candle will bring a lot of light, right? And so the thing, these societies that we live in are extremely dark, right? And the thing is, is that is that we have to bring to him them the light of this message, right? This this our, our tradition is a tradition of light. Right, that if anyone who studies the sciences of Sharia will feel his heart become enlightened, right, and that's every time we do a type of ibadah, it's increasing our nur, it's increasing the, the inward aspects of, of, of our iman, right? And, and uh, although there's a difference of opinion, some of them say that, that uh, you know that actions aren't increased by one's iman, but others say that that each and every time we do the more works we do, the more iman our our iman can increase, right? And so the point is is that that we be people who spread this light, right? And this is why we see them saying that 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 that, that when they came into the majlis of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that from because all of this they, they, they had that the description was that when they came into the majlis of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that it was hard for them to find out who he was, like which one was actually the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. First and foremost, from his humility, he didn't sit up on a, a podium and have people sit at his feet, or he was he was down with them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on the floor. Right, that that he never ate on a table, so I said, never ate from a table. Right? He used to sit on the ground. He used to sleep on the ground, so I said. Right, it's all signs of his of his humility. Right, and there's a story we see with Sayyidina Omar when he came in one day and he found the Prophet Muhammad so I said, him sleeping on a mat that had put uh, put marks on his side. Right, that 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 he said that Oh Rasulullah, that then he mentioned about what the kings of the other places live, the palaces that they live in, and so forth. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responded to him by saying, Isn't it enough for you, Ya Omar, that Allah has given us, this is for them in the dunya, and Allah has given us the akhara. Right? And so that, that when they came into his majlis, he was humble down there with them. Right? And also that he said that, that, that because they were with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is another reason they didn't know him, is because the other sahaba's faces were all filled with light. Right? That this light of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had emanated fr uh, from him to them. Right, so that wherever they went, that this is why the Islam spread so fast. Right, these people were enlightened people. Right, that, right. That these people, the Arabs, were not people. That, you know, they didn't people. You know, just uh, they, they didn't like. They didn't have any respect for Arabs before. Right, but after the after after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, changed these people from savages into enlightened people of the highest degree. Right, that, that this is why that their message spread so fast. Right, many times without saying anything. It's by seeing them, right? And so the, the point is that they, they, they carry this light and, and, they, and, and they brought this light to people that were in darkness, right? So he goes on to say that, 
اکرم بھی خلقی نبی انسان ہو خلقون بل حسنی مشتمل بل بشری متسیمی دیٹ ایکسلنس لائز ان دا برتھ That what excellence lies in the birth of a prophet adorned with such character. Beauty itself shines forth from his smiling face. Right, so akram is a way by which of its sifa to ta'ajjub. By saying what a, what a great, you know, uh, 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 prophet this is, his, even his outward form. Zanhu khulukun. So not only did he have a beautiful outward form, that he was, a, this beautiful outward form was adorned with character. Right, there's many people who are very beautiful outward. Right, but they just have awful character. And if you spend a short time with them, they're no longer beautiful to you. Right? And there's many other people that, that, that might not be beautifully outward, but, but you come to love them from their inward character. Right? So, كَذْ زَحْرِ فِي تَرَفٍ وَالْبَدْرِ فِي شَرَفٍ وَالْبَحْرِ فِي كَرَمٍ وَالْدَهْرِ فِي هِمَمِ Exquisite as a lily. Right? So, that كَذْ زَحْرِ فِي تَرَفٍ Taraf is like the, is, is the softness of something. Right? So, he was a soft as a, as a flower. Right? وَالْبَدْرِ فِي شَرَفٍ And as honorable as the as the full moon yani the full moon has honor over all the other types of moons right that when you see when there's when the, you see the little crescent moon right it's not as seen the big full moon right and, and what you feel by it so the, the, just as that just as the full moon has a lot is more honorable than all the other types of moon the half moon and the in the crescent moon that likewise he is 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 is, is, is more honorable over all others well bahri fi karamin and he is like a bahar in karam, in generosity. And uh, the Arabs would, would, would you ten, continue in, in Arab poetry, they would describe someone as generous, right, as, 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 as being a bahar. Right, and the idea is, is that if someone's in need of water, and they take water from an ocean, they'll continually have water, continue time and time and time again. Right, as if, and that likewise a, a generous person, right, that he'll continue and give, give and give and give and give and give and give over and over and over again. And it's almost as if it will never, uh, his, 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 what he has will never, uh, 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 will never, uh, uh, he'll always have more and more to give. Right? What dehri fi himma me? Right? He's like, his, his himma is like time. Right? And so this is, this is basically showing that, like, that they use, they, they, why, do they, why do they explain himma as time? Right? That normally, sometimes the Arabs, when they want to describe something, they, they, they describe something by what is done in it. Right, so that so that normally things are done within time, right? So if someone has himma like time, it means they're never getting tired, right? They're always doing, they're always has this himma that's constant, right, of doing something over and over again. كأنه وهو فرد من جلالته في عسكر حين تلقاه وفي حشمي that due to his majesty, even when alone, he seems surrounded by military might in cohorts of courtiers, right? So that that, that even when he's walking with his army, right, that he has such a majestic presence, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that's as if you don't notice anyone else except him, right, as if he's the only one coming in the army, right, from his majestic presence. And this is how he was described, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. habahu. That whoever saw the Prophet Muhammad uh, sallallahu alayhi suddenly had a hay before him and, and looked at him with, with, uh, with reverential awe. وَمَنْ جَالَسَهُ أَحَبَّهُ And whoever sat with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came to love him from his, from his akhlaq that spread. Right? So he is, if he is all by himself, right, when, when, he, is, when, he, is, when he is coming uh, uh, with, this, uh, with this group of uh, uh, soldiers. Right? كَأَنَّمَا لُؤْلُهُ الْمَكْنُونُ فِي صَدَفٍ مِنْ مَعْدِنَيْ مَنْطِقٍ مِنْهُ وَمُبْتَسَمِي That it is as if precious pearls locked in their shells poured from the treasure of his sweet mouth and, and smile. Right, so he's saying that, that when he spoke, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right, and, 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 and people saw his beautiful teeth that were described as being very white, they said it was as if a pearl, right, as if when he smiled that it was like a pearl when it when it's when the shell is open and you see the shining of it inside the the, the shell. Okay, la tiba yaalidu turban dhamma aadhumahu tuba li mul muntashiqan minhu wa multatimi that no tib no type of perfume. Uh, uh, is as sweet as the ground that holds his bones. What paradise awaits the one who breathes its scent or brushes lips against its soil? Right. This is what he says here: is that that, in, as we previously mentioned, 
that the place that, that, that is, is, is actually around the, the body of the Prophet Muhammad is, 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 the most, is the purest place on earth. Right? And he's saying that no teeb is, is going to equal, no type of perfume is going to equal the scent that comes from that dirt that is around his noble body, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's saying, Tuba, the muntashiq and minhu, that Tuba is, 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 could either be translated as good tidings, or it is a specific tree in Jannah that, that the believers, that, 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 that will be for the believers. Right? So we say in Tuba, right, glad tidings to the one who smells the scent. Right? Or multathimi, or, or kisses it. Right, or kisses this, this, this noble dirt uh, that is beneath his uh, feet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right, even though some of the scholars say that it's actually uh, makru to, to, there's a difference of opinion of touching the Muwajah Sharifa or his grave, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But uh, uh, the Sayyidina Bilal, right, they, they say that if, if uh, the Qaraha has lifted, even of those who say that, if it is by ghalabat al shok that one does it by not being able to overcome himself. And this is why we see that that in the story of Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu, that when he had gone to Syria because he couldn't handle living in Medina, you know, after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had, had, had passed away, that he had to leave Medina, right? And then he saw the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his dream, and, and, the, and the Prophet said to him that he said, مَا هَذَا الْجَفَاءَ ya, ya Bilal? Like, what is this jafa? Like, what is this? Why have you not, you know, why have you not come to visit me? You know, why, is, why, are you, why are you, you know, doing this? Right, so he set out immediately to go visit him, so I said them, and they said that when he arrived to Medina, that the first thing he did was he threw himself upon the grave of the Prophet Muhammad, so I said them, and, 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 and put his face uh, down near his grave, so I said them. Right, and so that, that also we see that in his story, make, Nam, that we don't want the dunya to be the extent of our knowledge. Right? We want to have knowledge of the akhirah. We want to have knowledge that come directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? If you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fear Allah and Allah will teach you. Right? And, 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 and incidentally the scholars say that, that all of the knowledges of Sharia are a means for someone to arrive close to Allah. Right? The only reason you study Aqeedah, the only reason you study Fiqh, the only reason you study Tasawwuf, the only reason you study Hadith, the only reason you study Quran, the only reason you teach, the only reason you do Da'wah, the only reason a believer does any aspect of his entire life is to get close to Allah. Right? And so, and so, that, so that, 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 that all of the sciences of the Sharia are a means to get close to Allah. Right? And, and, and there's every, every action that, that one can do to, to, to get close to Allah is a different door for him uh, that, from entering into the divine presence, right? But the greatest ways that we can enter into the in, in getting close to Allah is by is by is by seeking knowledge and giving da'wah. Right? These are the two greatest ways because this is the, this is the irth and, and and the inheritance of, of the prophets, right? This, that, that the prophets didn't inherit dirahim, dirham, or they didn't inherit dirhams or dinars, right? But they inherit they left behind they left behind ilm, right? That they, they that they left behind knowledge. Right, from an akhada, from an akhada, from an akhada who, for akhada be hadden wafer. So he who takes this this knowledge has taken a, a bountiful portion or a great portion. Right, so this is what they've left behind. Right, and so that he says that how could people uh, so that so that the 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 meblog al in right that the the, the the you know it's it, we can we can attain to that we can the extent of what we know of him is this he is a man and yet without exception he is the best of God's creation. So he says that. وَكُلُّ آيَنْ أَتَى الرُّسُلُ الْكِرَامُ بِهَا فَإِنَّمَا تَصَلَتْ مِنْ نُورِهِ بِهِمِ Right, that, that all the signs brought by the noble prophets before him came to them through his light alone. Right, and, and this is, he's, he's indicating here that, that uh, of, of this, that, that there's a hadith that says, the Prophet Muhammad said that, that كُنْتُ النَّبِيَنْ وَعَادُ بَيْنَ التَّرَابِ وَالْمَا That I was a prophet and, 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 and Adam was between water and clean and, and, and mud. Right, and so that so that that, that uh, uh, this is an indication. This is what people when they talk about the nur and the light of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being the first thing that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala created. Right, so if if that's the case, that that everything has come from Him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and and this is why the the, the, the uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala took the mithaq, right, took this uh, with akhad rubuka, right, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala took this mithaq. In this, in the, in, in, in this, uh, uh, this, this uh, treat, uh, this agreement with the prophets, that would the Prophet Muhammad have come to him, that they would have given victory to them, 
right? Before any any of the prophets became prophets, Allah took this pact with them that if that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi would have been sent to him, that they would have given victory to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Fa'innu <laughs> That he is the bounteous sun, and they her orbiting planets. She reveals their lights for humanity and the darkness of night. Right? That 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 the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is, he, he's making a comparison here, and this is what the po poetry is all about: is using these 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 linguistic meanings that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given us to give us these these to lead us to these uh, 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 these these deep spiritual meanings, these deep meanings, right? And this is like why you see an analogy. Analogies are, are like a higher way of learning, right? That, that analogies are by the way we which which we know things, right? That, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave us eyes. So we can eventually know that he's al-Basir. Uh, 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 that, that he gave us these signs within ourselves, the hearing, so that we can understand what it means to be all hearing. Right? So that, that these tools, these signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given us are all that so we can come to know him. Right? He's given us speech so that we can understand what, it, what speech is. Right? Even though we don't know the reality of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but these are indications such that we can come to know uh, 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 come to have this ma'rif of Allah, right? So he says that that he is the is is like the moon, right? He is to the he is to the other prophets and messengers like the sun is to the moon and all of the other planets, right? Just as the sun is the means by which the other planets and the stars receive their light, likewise that that uh, uh, that that the, the other planets, yani the prophets, are just reflecting this light that is all coming from the source of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And likewise, his ummah, as we see, as we see in the hadith, even those people have said some things about the narration that ashabi can nujum, that my companions are like stars, that that uh, 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 whoever you follow from them, you've been rightly guided, right? And, and this is why we see that different sahaba had different understandings, right? Ibn Mas'ud, you know, was was known for gharaib, right? Things that were not, uh, you know, for for things that were gharaib uh, 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 would be. That you know, it would be other. It would be like the opposite of the azima. Things that were uh, not strange, but that was technically mean strange. But the things is that they were uh, may have been not as common as certain other things, right? Whereas uh, uh, that uh, Abdullah bin Omar was known for azaim, right? For very strict opinions, and others were known for. So the Sahaba had different understandings, right? And, and this is the way that the Islam spread, and this is the 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 delil that that the, some of the scholars use for the proof of. Following have, of, of the in the obligation of taking a madhab, right? Is that is that we see that when the Sahaba spread out through the lands, that the, each of them went to a certain land, right? And and this is why that 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 the, the that they say that that the 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 ammat the ammat and nas, right? Their madhab is the person who is giving them is their mufti is the person who is giving them their fatwa, right? So wherever the Sahaba would go, is that all the legal opinions that that person would receive. Would be from that specific and individual Sahaba, right? And and they say that at the same time that 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 they didn't they didn't necessarily mention the dalil, right? When they when they when they uh, uh, when they would tell them, right? That a legal opinion, right? When someone asks a legal opinion, they're asking they're not asking you. And like nowadays, that many people will ask a legal opinion and they'll eventually mention they'll mention right away a hadith, right? They won't tell when you're asking for a legal opinion. You're asking whether something's halal. We ask something whether it's haram, makru, mubah. Yani, uh, uh, mustahab or uh, or wajib, right or fard. Right? You're asking for a legal opinion. You're not asking, right? And so, so the thing is that that, uh, and in, in, and then in the Shafi Madhab Imam Manawi even goes on to say that it's 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 makru to actually mention the dalil along with it because people aren't going to be able to understand the dalil if you would give it to them. That's in the Shafi Madhab. So the point is here is that that these Sahaba spread out through the lands, right? And each one of them went into different areas. Right? And this is why we see people that have true understanding, like Imam Malik, when the leader of his time wanted to make the Muwatta the book of the Ummah. He wanted to make the Muwatta the, uh, the uh, manual right, in, 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 in for, of legislation for the Ummah. Right? And what was his answer? He said that the Ashab of Rasulullah tafarruqu fil bilad. That the companions of the Prophet Muhammad had spread out through the different parts of the land. 
right? And each of them had tain, have attained a certain understanding from him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they they incorporated and, and they passed on this understanding that they had reached of him, right? Ikhtilaf ummati rahma, and then and the essence says that the, the the difference of opinion of the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a rahma, right? It's a mercy. Right, that difference of opinion didn't come so that we can argue over things. The difference of opinion came because it's a mercy, right? That 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 that, that it's a mercy that you live it. You, you 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 we live in, in 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 for instance America, and there's people that now put uh, types of thing like pig entrails in soap. It's a mercy that is opinion in Ahnaf that if something's chemically changed, it becomes tahir. Right, that doesn't exist in other madahib. It's a mercy that you have ahkam according to certain madahib that that make things easy for people. And people have, 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 as one of them has said, have forgotten the whole point about fiqh anyway. Right? The point of fiqh right, is that we learn how to worship our Lord. Right? Is that we learn the ahkam and, and we establish the ahkam outwardly and then focus on the inward too. Right? And, and it's gotten to the point where so many people are busy arguing about this point that they've forgotten. Right? That, that, that there's maqasid of the salah. Right? There's ahkam that we have to follow. Right? And there's inward ahkam too. Right? We have to be people of khushur. We have to have humility. We have to concentrate in our prayers, right? And so that so this is the this is the the two sides. This is the this is the this is the this is the uh, the, the two, double aspect, right? Of establishing inwardly and outwardly. The Christians went astray because they have no sharia, whereas the Jews are, are they they go to such detail that they've lost the spirit of the law. Where Islam combines the two, right? Islam combines the sharia and 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 the hakika. So that. Uh, they are like these. They are like um, uh, they are like the the sun. The he is like like uh, to the prophets. Like the sun is to the moon. You you hidden and water Right? That it it uh, uh, for people uh, people that are in darkness. Right? These people are, are guiding lights. And this is one of the things. That